Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Algorithms. This is Vithalam and today we'll be talking about the problem spiral matrix. So let's look at the problem description. Given a matrix of m cross n elements, m rows and n columns, written all elements of the matrix in spiral order. So it's you will be given a m cross n matrix and you, we have to print the uh, elements in spiral order. So what is spiral order, right? You start at the you know uh, zero zero index of the matrix, and then you go right, go down, like one two three, and then six nine, and then you go eight seven, you go up four, and five. So this is when you have three cross three matrix. If you see, that is what the output is expecting. So it's like one two three six nine eight seven four five. This is easy with a three cross three matrix, as in you just control the indexes on how, on how you want to traverse. But what happens is when the um, matrix is big and then you have like more than one spiral inside, then you have to control the indexes in a way that, you know, uh, we get a proper spiral order. So let's see how we can uh, do it. Let's copy the make a workbook and copy it yeah so we are looking at one two three six nine eight seven four and five so you can get this order um let's say you start with index zero zero and then you want to go until index zero Two, right because three elements and index is two yeah and then then you want to go from one two because we already read three here we don't want to read it again so you want to start here right one two and then you go all the way to two two um, right so it's basically you'll be reading two elements there and then once you read six and nine you're going from you're going from 2, 1 to where are you going? You're going to 2, 0. And then you're going up, which is basically 1, 0 to 1, 1. So we basically need, as you can see, we basically need four loops, uh, four far loops, which basically um, allow you to go in this direction. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only thing you have to look forward to is basically uh, identifying the indexes in a way that once it enters, once you are done with the outer loop, you you want to repeat the same thing for the inner loop. So how long do you do this? You do until, like, let's say you start at 0, 0, indexes i and j. i and j is 0, 0. And then m and n are, you know, rows and columns rows minus one length of rows minus one and length of columns minus one how long would you do it you do until i is less than or equal to m and j is less than or equal to n so if you get one uh, spiral right and then you basically iterate until this condition satisfies you basically get your spiral order let's start writing the code um, the time complexity would be of n square you basically you would be visiting each element once at most so uh, that is your time complexity let's start writing code so i'll be using go uh, it's very easy to understand you basically initialize a new array for result zero and then you can check if the length of the matrix is zero right we you don't want to continue uh, doing all kinds of validations uh, if the length of the matrix is zero if it is zero, then just re return an empty result. And then um, let's get uh, M and N, which is basically length of rows. All right, and length of columns. When I say columns, matrix of zero, basically. Um, you can have two indexes, which we can use to traverse. And then you start with your condition, which is I for I less than or equal to M, which is basically the number of um, rows minus one, and then J less than or equal to N. 
so yeah you this is how uh, until you iterate through the array what would you do for each iteration so we need four for loops basically to achieve these four things right you move right you move down you move left you move up so let's say we use a variable called x temporary variable you start at j and until uh, x is less than or equal to n x plus plus and result equal to append of this is basically adding elements to the result array and then which element would you pick you pick um, the row at i and column at x and why are we doing this uh, because what happens is after the initial loop let's say after the initial loop you want to start here right because you you're done with the one spiral and what is this value it is basically the column value the column and in, the index see we, we've done with the first column where uh, it ends at the first column now you want to start at the next column index which is basically j that's why we started j uh, we go until um, it's less than equal to n and then you we add each element to the matrix so do i plus plus why i plus plus because after you're done with the first uh, thing see where are we starting here 0 2 to 1 2 so i is increasing 1 so we increase i plus plus next we start with um, we have to uh, go down the spiral right uh, through the matrix so x is less than or equal x is equal to i x is, x is less than or equal to m x plus plus and what would you do here you basically append um, matrix of x which is basically the uh, row and then n n is constant because if you see we are going from 1 2 to 2 2 2 is constant here 2 is basically the number of columns in the um, the matrix so once you do this uh, next where are we going next right we, like we have to go to the left so what would you do we uh, um, increase decrease and minus minus because we went one to three and we went three to nine now we have to start at eight so basically n is the number of columns which is my columns minus one which is two now we have to be at index one so what are we what do we do we decrement the uh, the value n now we check for uh, boundary conditions again here because um, we are iterating multiple times um, um, the value of i could be uh, manipulated by these two uh, traversals so we check again if i is less than or equal to m if it is true then what do we do we start at n and we get than or equal to j x minus minus and result equal to up end of result comma matrix of m and then x so you do this traversal uh, which basically goes to the left and once you do this you do m minus minus why would you do m minus minus again you're done with this uh, left going until left now we have to go to the um, one row up right how do you go one row up m is the number of rows minus one which is two and then now you want to go to one see you started one zero here so you do m minus minus and if j is less than or equal to n what would you do here um, again you have to uh, go up and do the same thing again x starts at m this time and x is greater than or equal to i x minus minus result equal to append of result you're adding elements to the array result array matrix of x and gen j um, so basically the um, the column remains constant here if you see one zero um, finally we are going to one one so you manipulate the value of x and finally after this you increment j plus plus so you return the result at the end. All right, this is it. Let's run the code. Unless we made some typos, it should probably run.
why are we doing this? Uh, why are we getting this? Let's say, you know what? So we have to start at indexes of the, the last index, basically, not the actual thing. All right. So if you look at the input, um, the output is what we are expecting. So this is good. Let's submit. And it should work. All right, it runs in zero milliseconds with 100% of Go submissions. This is pretty straightforward. If you lay your um, matrix input and then the direction of each traversal you have to do like this uh, through, through the indexes, then you can easily basic, uh, form the program which uh, simulates this behavior. If you have any questions, please uh, add a comment. Um, I'll try to answer as soon as possible. And then uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos of this kind coming. Thank you.